up guys in this video we are going to go over how to properly wash a fifth wheel camper or really any camper that you may be encountering it is the winter time now or it's about to be winter time and it is rv and camper season so this is going to be perfect for a diy or a detailing company to learn how to properly wash your fifth wheel camper with that said let's go guys like always if you get any value out of this video please hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that little bell notification so every time i make a video it will pop up and all of the products and tools and everything that i use in this video will be in the description section down below so if you click those links to purchase those products it does 100 support me my family and my youtube channel so i really appreciate you guys for that we are going to be washing this 36 foot camper in this video but i also am going to go over a few things that i can teach you guys about camper detailing now this is actually my personal uh, camper this is not a paid customers camper so I'm gonna actually do everything that I personally would do on my own camper because it is my own camper let's go ahead and hop into some just logistical things and the tools that you're gonna need to be able to wash your camper well and some of the things that you might want to look for when you're going to go give a quote or um, you know maybe doing someone else's camper so let's go ahead and hop to it this camper is gel coated so most of your fifth wheel campers like this are gonna be gel coated if you ever go to a camper and you are you are a detailing company right here is going to tell you the size of the camper but this number right here so it says 36 foot this is technically a 36 foot camper but it's actually 36 foot interior space so inside of the camper it's 36 foot the outside um, dimensions typically add about five more feet so whatever number this is add about five more feet if you are going to be charging by the foot for years and years and years i did not realize this i thought 36 foot was actually the length of the exterior but that's not true that's the inside length so always add about five more feet to the camper if you're going to be charging by the linear foot which is what i would technically recommend now as you can tell this camper is pretty dirty it's been sitting under all these trees so it's pretty it's pretty nasty so we are going to be giving this a really good bath i usually like to look around the camper I usually go over all my seals, make sure the seals all look fine. On my camper, all of the seals are great except for one over here. So if you ever see any um, caulking or any seals that have any splits in them, that's actually not good because water will actually seep down and it'll get into here and then it'll actually rot the wood on the bottom. So as you could tell, this camper, which I need to fix, actually has some water damage down here already that I need to get fixed. So if you are a detailing company before you wash any camper, go ahead, check the, the caulk lines around and also check for water damage. So that way a customer can't come and blame you for water damage that you did not do. So look under the panels. If you see any water damage like this, that's a big sign that you may want to point out to the customer. And you want to just obviously make sure you don't hit those caulk lines. All right, now that we've gone over the camper, let's go over all of the tools that you are going to need to be able to wash your camper properly. First thing here is we have a super soft bristle brush um, on an extension pole. I actually bought this in the painting section at Lowe's. This is a really nice pole. It doesn't spin either, so you don't have to fight and find the hole. It's just ready to go. Whatever one you wanna click in, you're good. Next, this is an optional piece. This is if you have a painted camper or say if you have a brand new fifth wheel, which this isn't brand new. It's got some oxidation and it's got some uh, scratches already. So I'm not too worried about it, but this is actually lamb's wool. You want to use lamb's wool because sometimes these soft bristle brushes can actually leave scratches up and down the side. So if you want to alleviate any scratches or say if you just did a bunch of correction and now you're washing it to be able to wax it or ceramic coat it, you definitely want to use the lamb's wool uh, right here instead of this. So next, the fastest way you're going to wash your camper is by using a foam cannon this is a foam cannon and you're gonna see in just a little bit it's gonna spray soap all over the side so you don't have to have buckets and move buckets and soaps everything is just gonna get sprayed right onto the camper and we're just gonna scrub it in next we have Dawn and pure clean okay Dawn and pure clean I'm today we are gonna use a little bit of Dawn and it's gonna help strip off a lot of that tree stuff from all the trees and it's gonna help remove mold and mildew now the problem with Dawn is it will strip off your wax so if you are not going to wax your camper right after I probably would not recommend Dawn because it's gonna remove off any protection that you may have now in my case this camper actually has zero wax already so I'm already not too worried about it so I'm just gonna use Dawn and a little bit of pure clean to help really scrub out the surface 
if you are have a brand new camper that's just been waxed and you're doing like a maintenance wash do not use dawn because it will rip your wax off do use stark pure clean this is just a simple soap that will not remove your wax next we have super clean super clean is going to help get off any mold and mildew from the trees again it's also going to be good on our wheels that way we can clean our uh, rims and tires and it's going to be good for getting off bug guts off of the front there's a lot of bug guts on the front that we have to remove and we're going to get it off with this next is our pressure washer um i do love this sun joe pressure washer it's been really really good to me since i've been using it for the last few months i like it because it plugs right into an electrical outlet it has just enough power to get the job done without being overly powerful on campers you really have to be careful with pressure washers because you can blow through seals you can blow through window gaskets so you want to be very very careful when it comes to a pressure washer you really don't want an overpowered pressure washer this electric pressure washer is great plus it's awesome for being inside of a campground we're not waking up our neighbors it turns on and turns off as we need it all right guys so that is all of our tools we did a quick walk around the camper now let's just go ahead and get straight to cleaning the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to hop on the roof i'm not going to do a lot of scrubbing on my roof because my roof actually has um a different coating on it so i'm just going to wash it and rinse it off and get most of the leaves and stuff off and then we're going to hop to the side so i'm just going to show you guys really, really quickly up top how we go ahead and get most of the leaves and dirt off and then we're going to start washing the camper wow there's a ton of leaves all up here dude there's a sword up here which one of you kids throwing swords on my roof yeah i bet it was you all right so big professional tip get a longer hose so you don't have to drag your pressure washer up here this pressure washer actually only comes with like 25 feet i recommend 50 or 100 feet so you will want to go to home depot or lowe's and just get a longer hose so you don't have to do this all right guys so we got most of the leaves off i am gonna still pre-rinse it but as you can see it's pretty dirty up here but my roof i bought it like this it does have a weird coating and i was told not to use heavy chemicals normally i would use like a little bit of super clean or even just a slight bleachy water to get most of this off but i don't want to hurt my roof so it is okay if you use a little bit of bleachy water not a lot of bleach just a tiny little bit but anytime you use bleach on a roof of a camper you always want to wash it with dawn or any type of soap after to get all of the residue that's left behind from the bleach I always typically break the roof into a couple sections so as you can see i'm doing from here front and then we're just going to work our way off and then get off of the back um, anytime i am doing the roof too i am going to do the top of the slides and i'm also going to be doing this area right here because as you can see the slides are out so when you're down you can't do this area so when you're on the roof i do all of this area when i'm up top like i said typically i try to try to get the roof a little cleaner but because i have that coating on here I'm not too too worried about stripping it off. I just want to get the top layer of the dirt off. All right guys, so we are gonna start off on the front here, on the front cap. What you're gonna need for this process is gonna be your foam cannon, and this is straight super clean. Super clean is a good degreaser that's gonna help get off the bug. So I'm gonna give it a nice rinse, and then we're just gonna mist this around the front, and then we're gonna brush it, pressure wash it, and that's it. All the bugs, everything is gonna come right off. All right, as we could tell, we got all of the bugs off the front. There's still a little bit of debris left over. But now that we got all of the bugs off of the front, now what we're gonna do is we are actually just gonna rewash it with our foam cannon. So I always start off on the front cap. We get all the bugs, all the heavy stuff, and now we're just gonna foam cannon our way all the way around.
The tricky things when you're doing camper detailing, not so much in the winter, but in the summer. So if you're doing this in the summertime, is trying to get around this bad boy without the water drying to the side. So you really should do this relatively quickly. So I am trying to hustle around this. I am definitely out of shape since I've been doing this. Um, I haven't really done a camper detail in almost a year. And before that, it was probably three, almost two and a half years that I've done it like full time. I've been doing nothing but boats lately. So. I'm out, of, I'm out of shape guys um, but I wanted to make a quick little note that you want to try to bang around this as fast as possible so it'll alleviate on water spots and water marks and that kind of thing so we did the whole back now we're working our way down this side let's keep going So we're gonna knock out the rims and the tires. All you're gonna need is your super clean and uh, a rag is really all you need. You can get fancy brushes and stuff, but you don't really need that. Just spray it on, take a, take a microfiber rag, wipe it out, uh, pressure wash it, and that's it. They're gonna be clean. All right, we are finally finished with the wash job. Uh, I think it took me right at about 30 and probably more like 45 minutes to do that. Maybe closer to an hour, who knows. Hey Drake. But uh, what's up dude? Are you filming? Yeah, you wanna be on YouTube? Oh my God. It's my neighbor, he thinks I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, took me about 45 minutes to do that. Um, the sun has pretty much got this side completely dried. So what I'm gonna do now is after I wash it, I wanna dry it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go behind as you can tell right here, there's still a little bit of water spots on there. So we just wanna get that off. You will probably need a ladder for this, or if you have some type of um, chamois mop, you can do that as well. Um, this uh, camper is not necessarily perfect. It does have oxidation. And if you guys want a video on how to correct gel-coated campers, leave a comment down below. If I get enough comments, then I will do it. I have been putting it off because it is a lot of work and I ain't getting paid to do it. So I have no motivation to do it, but I will do it if you guys want it. So I'm gonna get it dried off. We're gonna dry it and then we're gonna do the windows and we're gonna move to the tire. So let's go ahead and hop to it. You are most likely gonna miss a few spots whenever you're brushing a lot. So take this time too when you're drying it um, to go over any spots that you may have not gotten perfectly with the brush. So really around like the awning and around those like slide outs and stuff, go ahead and take your rags and get some of those spots that you may have missed. All right, we got the everything dried. She's starting to look pretty good. Guys, as you could tell, um, it's shiny, it's clean, but I don't know if you can see on camera. I know you can. Right here, from, from here to here. See how glossy it is? I actually did a test spot a couple months ago and um, I buffed all this out. It's super nice. So that's what the, the gel coat really needs to look like. But this is actually what it looks like. It's pretty, pretty dull, pretty shoddy. So you can see how nice and glossy that looks compared to this right here. So that's where we definitely should get this compound and polish. And I will do it eventually. It's just a lot of work. 
and um, the whole thing needs to be done but you can see this nice little test spot so whenever you polish it out correctly it's going to help um, keeping your camper cleaner longer it's going to help washing it dirt gets stuck to oxidation so anytime your your boat or camper or car is oxidized dirt's just gonna be magnetic to it when it's slicked off and the pores are all closed up and it's really slick dirt and stuff will just run right off so that's really the biggest benefit to keeping your stuff compounded and polished and wax and keeping everything slicked off it just makes everything everything way way easier and you don't have to use as harsh of chemicals to get the job done so we're pretty much finished up we just got one more step this is my step that i like to just make the camper perfect so i'm going to do the tire shine and i'm also going to use the same tire shine to do some of the plastics some of the metal just to really give um the the aesthetics and the tires the rims everything just a nice little pop so let's hop to it all right so over the years i have tried hundreds and hundreds of different um uh, tire shines plastic trim shines honestly the best one that i have found is the griot's garage uh black tire shine they have a shinier one um or the dull one this is the shinier one i really like this stuff it goes on super easy it spreads super easy and it really does shine and it actually lasts really really long so this is what we're going to be using on all the trim and the tires all right so we got the neck here i'm going to do the neck i'm basically starting the front on pretty much all of my systems i start from the front and work my way all the way around just kind of keeps you consistent so just gonna spray this stuff you don't really need a lot either and i take a microfiber rag just to help spread it and wipe it in as you can see it's already shined it up really nice so you can see how dry this is right here i'm just taking a little bit of this spraying it up really puts a nice gloss on it now this is obviously steps. So what I like to do is wipe it in really good, let it dry. And when this stuff dries, it actually isn't very slippery. So you also wanna let, just let your people know, you know, obviously this is my camper, so I'm not too worried about it, but if it's an older couple that owns the camper, you may not wanna do this part. But as you can see, look how much nicer that already looks. Alright, so as you can see, we're pretty much finished up with the steps and look how much nicer that is. And once it's dry, I mean, that's not even slippery. It's, it's really not even bad. It just looks so much better. Now, one thing when you're doing the tire shine and when you're doing the plastics with this stuff, you really do want to make sure the wheels and everything that you're doing with it is um, completely dry. You really don't want it to be wet. If you want more of a natural finish on the tires, spray it on, let it sit for a couple seconds, and then just take a towel and wipe it in. If you want a really super rich, glossy look, then just spray it on and just leave it. You don't even have to touch it. Look at that, so much nicer. Way better looking. After a while, your rag will just get kind of saturated with the tire shine and you really don't even need to spray anymore the biggest thing is just getting all these plastics looking really good dried up it really makes a big difference in your finished detail there's still a little water in that Rock. dang i'm not even what are you doing i'm scaring you trying to scare me it literally did not work oh. but say hi hi <laughs> Alrighty, wow, we are officially done washing our camper. Let's go ahead and take a look at the overall product. Alrighty, let's check out the camper. Overall, it is looking really, really fresh. We got our nice steps. Got our wheels and tires all looking really fresh. It's looking good. Plastic's looking good. Overall, the camper is completely washed. Like I said earlier, it definitely could use a polish, but overall, I'm happy with it. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. A super simple video on how to wash a fifth wheel camper. I hope it helped you out. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. Comment down below if you want that polishing video or if you like RV content. I have a lot more that I can do if you want it. Other than that, that is it for today's video, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Let's go.